guys, welcome to another episode of Local Analog. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects, gear. To me, gear is really important. And it's not important because of a gear chase or of having a certain type of camera, but it's really important because it helps you to understand what you're shooting, why you're shooting it, and how you're going to achieve the best result with the tool that you have in your hand. And so today we're going to talk about several different cameras of mine, ranging from a large format all the way to a digital camera that I adore. Every single piece of gear that you buy and accumulate needs to make sense for the type of scope of work that you're doing. If you buy a particular camera, it doesn't mean a certain type of work is going to come. The purpose of this video is to kind of show you guys what I'm using uh, and some of our favorite cameras. Um, so yeah, let's get started. We'll go back to the room and I'll show you guys everything that I have. So first up, um, and by the way, not all these cameras are mine. Um, some of them, friends have let me borrow indefinitely, um, so to speak. But the first one is the 4x5. Uh, this is a Sonar. Um, these are really great monorail system cameras. I really like this one. This is actually the only 4x5 I've ever used. 4x5 is still very new and mysterious to me, um, but I'm, I'm still trying to uh, get into it a little bit more um, but I really enjoyed using this one um, I really love the simplicity of the film holder the film back I love how it's really modular and you can move it really easily again I've never used like a graph like or I've never used a um, like any other type of system before so this is uh, the only one I've really ever used and so but definitely recommend it for a beginner again this is not mine this is a friend's um, who is away for the summer and let me hold on to it. But highly recommend this camera. Uh, we've shot with it on the uh, channel a few times, um, which has been really fun. All right, next up, this is the Mamiya RZ67. Um, this is a new camera. So I just got this camera and haven't even put a whole roll through it yet. Um, but a little bit of why I purchased it. Um, We'll get into the other cameras, but to me, this is just a good six by seven camera, medium format for me to have uh, for creative work. And so um, we'll get into the next camera and why I don't use it for um, exploring or traveling or creative work. We'll get into that. But, but the majority is I love the viewfinder. I love being able to use it um, as for my waist, for my hip. And so I can be a little bit more, um, a little bit more uh, secretive about, you know, shooting and, I'm not, I don't stand out like a sore thumb if I'm walking around. Um, it is a large camera. It's, it is very heavy. Um, but I think part of that is just the experience of being able to um, enjoy you know, the process of, of a camera such as this one. Pentax 645N. Okay, so this camera is kind of a workhorse camera for me. So I use this for commercial stuff. So if I'm getting paid to shoot, and there's a budget or a desire for film to be used, I'm gonna use this camera. Uh, namely, for a couple reasons, it's, it's smaller. Um, another reason is I get 16 shots in a roll. Um, and the lens is really, really nice and um, really smooth. Um, and I'm able to use it well. Um, it's very simple, it's automatic um, uh, film advance, and so that makes it really easy to use quickly. Um, my only, I guess the only downside of this camera is it doesn't use film backs. It uses film. It uses film inserts, and so I do have another insert for it um, that you can just prepare another roll of film, and then whenever you're done, stick it in there. But there's no dark slide, and so you can't take this film out um, while you're in the middle of an exposure. I love six four five format. Um, a lot of people will buy this camera if they don't want to spend the three to $4,000 on a contact 645. And, and really, from what I've seen in research, there's no difference. And so I don't wanna spend way more than I have to just to have a brand name. And so this camera is wonderful for that. Um, and I love the 645 format. It's probably my favorite format for portraits. Um, so if I'm shooting and making any type of money or any type of anything and letting me use film, I'm using this camera. Next up is a Canon T70. So this is just a little cheap uh, camera. I think you can get these for 60 bucks. Um, and I really like it because it's just, it's just fun. Um, it's a, it'd be a good travel camera. Uh, it is a automatic advance. And so it's, it's mostly, it's mostly uh, electronic. And so 
the buttons that control the shutter speed. Um, you go, you move up and down uh, with these buttons, so there's no knobs or anything to turn except for the lens. Uh, this is a 28 millimeter lens, um, very wide. I keep this lens on there. I actually don't have another lens for it, um, but it's just if I'm going to be, you know, traveling or exploring a city. This is a great option to have, um, especially if I don't have a ton of time to walk around uh, and really focus on my shots because it's very easy to focus, very quick focusing. There is a built-in light meter and it's very accurate. Um, and all the knobs are, are just metering options and there's a self timer. And so really like this camera. I love how long it is. When I first saw it, I actually thought it was kind of like a panoramic camera because of how long the, the body is. Um, but really, this is just a battery pack. Another, another great thing about it is it takes AAA batteries. And so if you are traveling with it and you run out of batteries, you're not going to be in a crazy pinch to find, you know, C3032, whatever they are, batteries. And so um, it's a great camera for that um, purpose. It's just very simple. It's very cheap. If I break it, I'm not going to be set back, you know, hundreds of dollars. But um, it's just a good camera for, for just having some fun. Next up is the Leica M6. Uh, I don't have to convince many of you why this is a great camera or why I have it. Um, but I bought this camera because I wanted to kind of commit to a year of using this camera uh, for personal work with a 50 millimeter lens. Um, and I wanted to, I really wanted to get um, to where I was so accustomed to a 50 millimeter lens that um, I, I would be able to see things in a 50 millimeter viewfinder uh, without having to look through one and so this camera has just been really helpful for me to kind of strip away uh, from you know shooting digital or shooting electronic cameras um, there is a meter and I do use the meter um, but I, I mostly use it just to kind of give me a ballpark of where I'm going to land with exposure uh, when I use this camera I'm not overly concerned about um, getting the most perfect shot I do try to use zone focusing as much as I can Still learning that, it's not easy, but it is something you get accustomed to over time. Um, I try to put mostly black and white through this, but sometimes I can't resist the urge to put uh, uh, Kodak color film in here or Fuji color film. Um, this is not a Leica lens. Uh, I am not somebody who has to have a Leica lens. Uh, I really enjoy this lens. Um, all the reviews and comparisons that I've seen are uh, you can't tell them. You can't tell them apart hardly. Um, and if I ever did get a, like a 35 millimeter lens or maybe a 90 millimeter lens, I would consider the Leica. Um, but I think that this Zeiss lens is, is made so well. It feels so good in your hands. Um, and so I really enjoy this camera. Um, I take it with me pretty much everywhere, every single day. Um, you know, this is not something I'm going to take to. Uh, uh, anywhere where I think it could get broken, that's for the other camera, the T70. But this camera is just great for um, everyday use. Um, it's built really well, it's very durable, it's, um, it's a hardy camera. Um, and it makes you feel really good, I guess, like when you hold this camera around your neck. Um, and so I love this camera, uh, I highly recommend it. I don't think Leica is, um, like you have to have a Leica camera, but um, but I think this is a great camera to uh, really dive into the, the Leica series with. So, um, love this camera. This is probably going to be my camera for at least the next year, just daily use camera. So, like I said earlier, I am a hybrid shooter, so I don't have the luxury of only shooting film. And so, I do have two digital cameras that I really love and that I've really found a lot of satisfaction in using. The first one is the Sony A7R2. Uh, ever since the A7R 3 and all these new cameras came out for Sony, the prices on this camera have dropped immensely. And um, Zeiss makes some really excellent lenses for this camera. And so this is the only thing I have for this camera. I have a, a Zeiss Loxia 50, um, and I'm able to really retain the analog feel of a, of a camera because it's manual focus only. Um, it has a manual aperture ring. and so. Even though it's digital, it feels like, a, um, like an analog camera, and I really like that. And so I use this camera either as a travel camera uh, or a backup camera for my main camera. And so really love it. Um, we, we shoot most of our local analog videos with this camera. Um, the reason why is because it has built-in steady shot, which is really important because 
with what we do, we don't want to have to lug around a large stabilizer like a Ronin or uh, whatever they're coming out with these days. We don't want to have to deal with that. And so we just use a, a little a gorilla pod and this camera and we find that the results are really good. Um, I will say that because it's a Zeiss manual focus, manual aperture lens, you don't get to use the features of um, of the, the, the Play Memories app with the camera, which the app is not very great anyway. So I wouldn't recommend using it even even uh, even if you did have a Sony lens, unless you just had to for composition reasons. But I love this camera. The file sizes are huge, almost too big. Um, and uh, I, I do wish that there was a way to shoot uh, multiple stops of uh, raw size. Uh, I know you can use compressed and uncompressed, but I do wish that there was a way to uh, shoot a smaller raw image. Lastly, but not least, um, is a Canon 1DX Mark II. Uh, this is a very large camera. Um, what I, I bought this camera used, of course, um, off eBay probably close to a year ago. Um, and this is what I shoot weddings with, or anything commercial, um, digital-wise. And so I shoot this camera, um, and I have three. I have two other lenses, a 35 and a 85. But I, I mostly just keep a 50 on there. It's great for weddings because the battery lasts all day long. And so I don't have to bring any extra... I do bring a battery with me, but I, don't, I never have had to use it. And I'm, and I'm shooting 12-hour days. Um, I like it because it's very versatile with the battery pack the built-in battery pack to go from portrait uh, to landscape mode really quickly. Um, it's just a very durable camera. Um, I don't ever really need the, the fast uh, frames per second. Um, I don't shoot sports, but uh, if, if I need it, I know it's there. Um, it's a very good camera. Um, I owned a 5D, uh, 3 and a 4, um, and I feel like that this camera is worth the investment. It is expensive. I think the body by itself goes for $6,000 brand new right now. Um, and this is summer of 2018. And so, uh, and it's been out since 2016, I believe. And so it's still a very valuable camera. Um, and I have no intention of ever switching. This has been the best camera, uh, digital camera I've ever used. Um, I, I've gotten to the point where I'm so used to it um, that it's hard for me to use other cameras. Um, and so, Digitally speaking, I think this is an amazing camera with amazing glass options. Um, again, if I can use film, I'm using film, but uh, normally if I'm at a wedding, I'm shooting with this camera hanging on one side, and then I have the Pentax 645N on the other side. And so I'm kind of trying to be as hybrid as I can. So that's it guys, everybody's different when it comes to this stuff. I'm a hybrid shooter and so I don't have just film cameras, I have to be able to have some digital cameras as well. And so I hope that this video was helpful to you to see what I'm using, uh, what local analog is using in all of our videos as well. Um, and so if you like this video, please subscribe, um, please actually like the video, uh, click the little thumbs up button. And let us know in the comments what kind of gear you're using. Are you a hybrid shooter or are you a completely film shooter? Uh, or are you a digital shooter who enjoys the idea of film? Um, we really want to know what you guys are thinking. We want to know what you guys are doing. So please let us know in the comments. We'll see you next time. I don't wanna know. Oh.